Uh, my name is Eun So Jo. I'm from Stanford. I'm a PhD student in history there. I'm very excited to share with you my findings with Timnit Jibru on lessons we can draw from archives. So recently in the fairness community, we've seen lots of proposals for documenting and annotating data sets that have already been collected. But the question still remains, how do we approach data collection? And in fact, um, industry-wide surveys have shown that the lack of standards for data collection has spurred practitioners to call it a wild west. And our work aims to start a discussion in this space with a focus on sociocultural data. Um, but sociocultural data has existed for as long as humanity has. And how can we learn from other fields that have dealt with sociocultural information for much longer than computers have existed? Historical archives are the oldest known human effort in collecting sociocultural information. Uh, on the far left, you see the ancient Roman archive tabularium built in 79 BC, over 2,000 years ago. And the first, very first archives in, hum in human history were instituted by states in order to collect taxes, to gather information about the masses that they're governing for natural and human resource management purposes. And you can see that they've evolved over time. And archives are really useful for us because they allow us to imagine what data collection can look like outside of machine learning. In fact, some types of archives lie on the opposite spectrum of supervision and data collection, especially if they're very selective. So on, on one side, on one extreme, we have the Wild West approach that we mentioned before that we call laissez-faire. And on the other side, we have highly interventionist methods of collection that some curatorial archives may lie. Laissez-faire approaches tend to, be, tend to focus on scale, and they're often automated, so they're lower in labor costs and can be very, very fast. Whereas interventionist methods tend to be highly selective and exclusive in what goes in and stays out of the archive and they may be higher in labor costs and slow, because sometimes an archivist may go through each document individually. So the data sets that are derived from laissez-faire approaches may be more natural, but reflecting natural biases, and interventionist methods can produce data sets that are more carefully selected, but often at the mercy of the curator's agenda. And neither extreme is desirable over the other, and most data sets lie somewhere in between. And in fact, the definitions and needs of data sets depend on a whole host of factors, such as time, what may be fair today may, may not be fair tomorrow, purpose, what may be fair for a task may not be fair for another task, and audience, what may be fair for you may not be fair for the person next to you. But what remain evergreen across these variables are the procedural and institutional infrastructures that force us to be more effortful and conscientious in our data collection. And the language and concepts that allow us to talk about data collection in a more critical manner. So we have gathered several lessons from archives. Archives have been dealing with this for 2,000 years and put them into five overlapping categories um, of interest for the, fair, for the fairness community. Consent, inclusivity, power, transparency, ethics, and privacy. Consent is a big problem in machine learning because of misusing, mislabeling, and misclassifying types of, uh, types of data, particularly from marginal and minority communities. So we can learn from community and participatory archives which equip and give tools for these groups to participate in manners that they feel most appropriate. Another problem with machine learning data sets is that they're often driven by convenience and the task, the AI task at hand, whereas uh, archives are, start with mission statements. And they, are, they start with abstract ideas and topics, and that forces data collection to be more inclusive and reckon with the, the data composition. Power is another problem. Uh, some people have more data than others. And in fact, some, some data sets may be uh, 
closed and proprietary. So archives and libraries have dealt with this problem by introducing consortial models since the early 20th century uh, by linking together communities big and small so that they can reap from the benefits of economies of scale and also smaller groups can uh, start projects that they could not otherwise. We're already familiar with how documentation can improve transparency in machine learning. Archives also use appraisal, a multi-person, multi-level appraisal flow system, and starting with the very abstract idea of the mission statement to finer grained levels, everything is recorded for transparency purposes. Um, finally, ethics and privacy is difficult in machine learning due to the difficulty of enforcement. Um, we can learn from how archives have uh, supra-institutional and supra-institutional government govern governance bodies, codes of ethics beyond the organizations that they work for directly, and uh, professional membership or, uh, systems so that collectors are answering not only to their direct employers, who are often profit motivated, but are answering to codes of ethics that lie above um, the individual systems. But archives are not perfect, and the, the most obvious problems with these archival approaches in machine learning is cost and the time involved with the extra uh, procedures. And, and beyond that, just last week, we've seen that uh, the Washington Post published an article about how the U.S. National Archives had blurred images of the signposts that had references to, to Trump and uh, female, the female anatomy in the 2017 Women's March. And the National Archives apologized soon after, but the damage to the trust system had already been done, showing that there are ethical violations in archives too. Um, also, we can see that archives sometimes uh, replicate the power disparities in racial and gender lines. Um, we can see that among the ranks of archivists, um, higher ranking and higher paying archivists tend to be male and white. Um, however, uh, these problems actually help us in anticipating and preempt taking preemptive action for problems that machine learning um, data collection may face in the future. Thank you.